Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to review the Russian album from Paul McCartney. So, uh, this came out in 1988, and, and it was exclusively released in the Soviet Union originally. Um, and it's got, I have a soft spot for this album because when I met Paul at the BBC in December 87, I asked, I asked him, uh, what's your new, when's your new album or something like that? And he says, I think the next one's just going to be released in Russia. <laughs> and we all thought he was joking and it turned out to be the Russian album. And it was just released in Russia and I've got some different versions of it to show you. Uh, this was the version I picked up a couple of years after it came out, and I think it might be a bootleg. I'm not sure. It's pretty hard to tell because uh, it's on this Russian label, but uh, it's very similar to another version I can show you. And uh, the bootleggers did such a good job that it's pretty hard to choose between a bootleg and a Russian LP because the quality is <laughs> uh, not the best in, in both cases. So this is another copy I picked up, which is uh, on the white label. Uh, again, it says it's a Russian issue on the, in the shop where I bought it, which was Notting Hill Gate in London. But uh, I know that the bootleggers did go to town on this one and uh, do pirate copies so I'm not sure to be honest with you uh, and then the third one I picked up yesterday in Budapest pretty cheaply is, is this one uh, with this different back cover and this was the sleeve for the original um, the one with two fewer tracks summertime and I'm gonna be a wheel someday we're, we're not on here uh, but interestingly enough they are listed on the sleeve so <laughs> it's all a bit confusing but anyway this album was released commercially in the UK in 1991 and uh, I can't remember if I if it was released on the vinyl with saying Paul McCartney or just on CD because on the Russian you're, just, you're seeing Paul McCartney's name in Russian obviously so this came out in 91 with no bonus tracks but it had Paul's statement translated into English and I'll just read it because this is what w went out on the original Soviet issue. When I was young I asked my dad if people wanted peace. He said to me, yes people everywhere want peace, it's usually politicians that cause trouble. It always seemed to me that the way the Beatles music was admired in the USSR tended to prove his point that people the world over have a great deal in common. In releasing this record exclusively in the Soviet Union, I extend the hand of peace and friendship to the people of the USSR. So it was all, according to Paul, he did this in the spirit of Glasnost, when Gorbachev and uh, Reagan and Thatcher were developing improved relations, and he, he just decided to do his bit, and I think it's uh, admirable. So. I've taken you through my versions of it. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, some of these tracks were not released in Britain on an album at the time, but they did come out on these tw various 12-inch singles. So the Once Upon a Long Ago 12-inch uh, had Midnight Special and Don't Get Around Much Anymore on it. And another version of the same single had Lordy Miss Claudia in Kansas City. And then My Brave Face in 89, this one, had I'm going to be Will Sunday and Ain't That a Shame. And I think maybe a couple maybe released on a, a CD single around the same time, I'm not sure. But uh, so that's quite interesting. Uh, so we'll go through the tracks now. I think this was a breath of fresh air after. For Paul, anyway, because he he'd been a little bit struggling in the studio to come up with new material, and press to play had been a little bit lackluster in terms of songwriting. Although there's some fine moments on it, but uh, he'd been going non-stop since the Beatles split, and 
if anyone deserved a break to do a rock and roll covers album, it was Paul. And uh, John had done one 12 years earlier, the rock and roll album. And this album does share a couple of tracks in common with that. And a third one with the same name, Just Because, which was actually a different track to the one that John covered. Uh, and this is the uncut Ultimate Music Guide to McCartney. And uh, this album gets a pretty positive review, uh, I'm glad to say. And it wasn't always my favourite, this one, and it's, I know quite a, few people in, a lot of people in the VC don't care for it. But I listened to it this morning in preparation for this review and I found it quite refreshing. Um, Kansas City opens it and uh, just a raucous version and a lot of these songs were recorded live in one take. Um, the musicians are Chris Whitten on drums who l later went on to play on Flowers in the Dirt and did that tour in 1990. Mick Green on guitar and Mick Gallagher on piano. And then another set of sessions, that was on the 20th of July, 1987. And then on the next day, they recorded three tracks where Paul switched from bass to lead guitar, and Nick Garvey took over the bass duties. And Henry Spinetti, who'd played with uh, Clapton and George, is on drums, and Mick Gallagher again on keyboards. So those are the musicians recorded down in Sussex at Paul's house, at Paul's home studio. And uh, just about a month after I first met Paul, because I first met Paul in June 87, and this was towards the end of July 87. And whilst I'm reviewing the Russian album, I thought maybe it's best good to show you this copy of Wildlife, which I picked up, which is uh, from the early 90s. And it plays quite well, although the sleeve is, leaves something to be desired, but it's an interesting curio. It's on a St. Petersburg label, I see. So Kansas City, which of course had been famously covered on Beatles for Sale. And uh, I'm not going to say that this track is uh, of the same quality as the Beatles version. It isn't. But I think Paul does a creditable version. And he's 45 years old at this stage, but his voice is still in good shape, and he's doing a pretty decent job on the vocal. 20 Flight Rock has got a soft spot for Paul because it was the track he played to John when they first met uh, the Wilson Fate in Liverpool and we were just up in Liverpool a few weeks ago and the, the Magical Mystery Tour bus tour took us past the uh, Wilton uh, Fate, Church Fate site. Uh, it was actually opposite the uh, graveyard where Eleanor Rigby is buried as well. And uh, that was just, I recommend that highly to any, any of you who haven't been to Liverpool to check out that. Any, any number of tours that take you around the city and take you around the Beatles sites in particular. Um, so that's 20 Flight Rock. It's, it's a creditable version. It's nothing, it's, it's not an absolute favorite of mine. They were to do this on the, on the subsequent tour. Um, Lordy Miss Claudy is written by Lloyd Price and uh, I think it was covered by Little Richard and uh, it's just, just a great raucous number and Paul's obviously really loving doing this one and he does a good version. Bringing It On, Bringing it on Home To Me was uh, recorded by John on his rock and roll album and uh, this version is not far behind that and actually benefits from being a fuller version of the song whereas Lennon's was uh, combined with a medley of Send Me Some Loving which to its detriment I think so uh, not far behind. I know compa comparisons are odious, as Derek Taylor once said. So I don't like to compare this album to rock and roll, but I suppose it's inevitable that one does. Uh, Lucille, uh, which had been done over the years by Wings on their first tour in 71, 72, and also on the 79 tour. Um, big favorite of Paul's. Little Richard number, and uh, he does a great version of it here. Uh, Don't Get Around Much Anymore is an older song, and actually this was, I was reading the sleeve notes by Roy Carr from The Enemy, who co-wrote that famous illustrated, uh, Beatles illustrated record book with Tony Tyler, of course. Um, good liner notes, very informative, and 
I didn't know that this song was, or I'd forgotten that this song was a World War II favourite for the uh, the GIs stuck out a million miles from home. Um, missed the Saturday dance. I heard they crowded the floor. Um, don't get around much anymore, basically. Uh, so it was kind of in the top three songs for American soldiers during World War II. Uh, and written, originally performed by Duke Ellington. I'm not sure if he wrote it, but he certainly performed it. And then I'm going to wear a wheel someday. Is a I think it's a Fats dom Domino number, and it's a big favourite of mine. I love the feel, I love the vocal, and the drumming, the whole band. Musicianship on this album is just great and very spontaneous. And that's actually one advantage I would say this album has over John's rock and roll album because certainly the Spectre tracks are a little bit overproduced and uh, you know you there's no horns on here it's just just a band rocking out and uh, I think the spontaneity is uh, is is better on this album than it was on John's um, so strong closes to side one by the way not a great cover is it I can see what he's trying to do but it's not great the, C the CD has some interesting pictures in the in the booklet uh, this this one is from the same taken by Mike McCartney from the Chaos and Creation front cover sessions at the same same period I think and then that one and then this was a originally on the Pretty Little Head 12 inch single from 86 I think and then interestingly he's included the back cover back to the egg shot here because it is a great picture and why not use it again uh, so on to side two that's all right mama Elvis Presley song and uh, I think when Paul's doing Elvis obviously he knows it backwards but it doesn't do too much for me and he tries to do the Elvis impression on this and the the other Elvis song just because and uh, it's not that moving for me. It's it, I prefer when Paul stamps his own identity on, on songs, and he doesn't really do that here, in my opinion. Um, and the same would go when he covered it, for when he covered it with the Beatles on the BBC sessions. Um, Summertime is an old ballad, and uh, made famous by Gene Vincent, I read. And it's okay. Uh, but it's not a highlight for me. Ain't that a shame? Fats, Fats Domino. Uh, a good version, but it's not as good as Lennon's uh, on the rock and roll album. I'll, I'll give the nod to John on this one. I think this one is taken a little bit too fast. and It's okay, but I, I, I think I prefer John's vocal and his the overall performance and production on, on rock and roll. Cracking up features Paul on doing some nifty lead guitar and uh, amusing lyrics and uh, not a very well-known track but I love it it's it's great not, not great but it's decent just because as I mentioned is the Elvis cover and then the album finishes the midnight special which is another very old song I think from the 20s or 30s um, written in Houston uh, by the guys in the local prison there who thought if the light of the midnight special which was a train would shine on them then they'd be set free so that's what the lyrics are all about and uh, I love this track and uh, I quite I have a lot of fondness for the whole album really and uh, it's made me think I should go and rediscover Run Devil Run because that's another one I've neglected over the years um, and I think this album the performances he gave on this album maybe gave Paul the confidence to to go out and tour again or and certainly uh, before that to come out with his to, it kind of reinvigor reinvigorated him I think to go back in the studio with a band which is what he did for Flowers in the Dirt he hired Hamish Stewart Robbie McIntosh as well as Chris Whitten who's on here and Linda and he just made a a, a band type album whereas the previous few solo albums had been more or less um, solo or just enlisting help of different people on different tracks and maybe lacked a bit of uh, continuity. So 
that was the Russian album. I think it's 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 underrated. It comes in for a little bit too much stick, in my opinion, and it's certainly got its highlights. So check it out if you don't know it. And thanks for watching.